What is up YouTube? Griffin here again with another vlog and today we have two special guests that is from Fort Benning. So please do, without further ado, introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Stringer of Fort Benning's 4th Platoon. I'm Woods, same platoon, from Fort Benning. And this is the casting couch. What the fuck? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> You're playing. making it up. I'm just playing. They, uh, they started that shit. Okay, so um, talk about your personal experience from uh, Fort Benning. Because uh, I know it's different for all the basic trainings. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys are all males. Yeah, we were. We were all males. Uh, yes, yep. we had no females except for... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Except for at um, Harmony Church, which was miles away. Okay. So the entire time while at basic, we never got to see females. Oh no! Except there, there was that time at the process, the in processing station, we passed by them, but that was it. That didn't count. Not at BCT. <laughs> <laughs> Not with us. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't basic training yet. But yes, it was processing for basic. Training. We were deprived. Except for. Except for Caitlin. And yeah, Caitlin, uh, we, had, we had scientists actually at our um, company area that would give us protein and carbs. Mm -hmm. um, every night, it was a everyday thing. We every night, we were, yeah, we were pretty much test subjects. We never had those in Fort Jackson. Never? Did you guys have like a bar? Or we something? have a protein bar, but okay. that is given, and like in different times, like before PT or like if we're going somewhere that's gonna be the whole entire day kind of a uh, event. And that's the only time we get a K bar. So we had Cosby bars. Yeah, we had Cosby. Yeah, we had K bars. So. <laughs> so um, <laughs> All right, moving forward, um, talk about your personal experience as far as red face, white face, and blue face. Oh, uh, well, red face sucked. <laughs> <laughs> red face was garbage. I did like I didn't even know a human could do that many push-ups in three days. I didn't even know I could. The first seventy-two hours were so boring because it was just getting smoked and processing and death by PowerPoint. It was like a worse in processing station and about one thousand slides of PowerPoint. <laughs> 72 hours and like a sharp a sharp brief. I, I don't even know why hours. they're sharp briefing in Fort Benning when there's like literally no food. There are no way. Yeah, we had a, um, well, I mean, you know, um, we had, we had, there was a, there was a there were the lunch ladies. Yeah, there were lunch ladies. <laughs> That's about all we yeah. had. Lunch ladies and then, you know, sharp, you know, man on man contact that sharp does exist. Still skills. That. Still, yeah, we had a skill. <laughs> skills are being traded for favors. Blowjobs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Moving forward, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, it was a rough time. I bet. <laughs> so technically, when you guys got done with maps and you guys were processed for, like, going straight to basic training, you know how you stay in reception, right? Yes. Yeah. So technically, those shots that you received during reception didn't even matter, like for that day zero, because no. the first thing you do when you got down the bus is get smoked. Pretty yeah. much. So the shots that they give you will make both your arms sore. It doesn't even matter. Like, like you don't like even concrete. Feel and then you imagine doing three thousand push-ups after your arms <laughs> yeah. are yeah. sore. Yeah. And that's what you're gonna be dealing it's with. It's like you did a shoulder sore. workout for your first time, well, and your arms are real sore, and then you just do push-ups anyways. Yep. You're it's doing nothing but push-ups. You're gonna learn. You're gonna really learn the half right face. That's gonna be <laughs> your new like. As soon as you hear that, your fucking heart skips a beat. And at ease and drill sergeant on the floor. Yes. So there's three things to remember. Yep. How was how was the outline of your bay though? Like as far as like having, you know, battle buddies and your platoon. Uh, you call it battery, right? No, we call them the bay. Yeah, no, I mean like called your bay. your company itself. Like it was called a company. Oh, the CTA it's a company. CTA company. Yeah. Okay. So as far as the layout, how does like how do you visualize it? Like, can you explain? Like in the bay. Yeah. Oh man. Well, in the bay, there's like that middle section called the kill zone. Oh shit, yeah. And we'll get um, back to that later in blue face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then all around it, you just got this little little area, and then outside that little area is all the bunks just lined up. And then, like, the lock. I don't remember how the lockers work because we changed it at the very end. Just um, go, yeah, watch, that's right. go watch a movie called Full Metal Jacket. When you see where all the privates are, when the drill sergeant's yelling at them, just imagine that. And it's pretty accurate to what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> to where we stand. Yeah, to where you stand, that you're standing at the foot of your bunk, you know. Stand at a position of attention a lot, yeah, and you know, yep. yeah, you're gonna be there a lot. Definitely spend a lot of time in the bay. Not us. And it is possible to lay down. Us. We spent a lot of time. Literally, training. training days. We are not allowed inside our bay. Not until we get, like you know, it's time to toe the line. We are 
literally like let's say like 18 hours of training from like morning to evening up to like 1800 that's when you send that's when they send you upstairs and like have one hour free time yep no yeah. personal time mm. which goes by way too fast it does you're gonna have to spend time you're using your personal time to shower and to take care of other yep. things like organizing your locker yeah. washing your clothes so in reality you probably only have about 20 minutes to 15 minutes of free time a day for 10 weeks yeah, ten weeks. Yeah, ten weeks. What What are your memorable memorable moments? Oh man, while you were I, guys in yes, it's like what you guys were I have training? a few. Um, I gotta think about this. Well, name some good ones and name some horrible ones. Well, like um, land nav for you when you got lost in a restricted area. Land nav, yeah, land nav <laughs> was pretty terrible because um the like you have to find three points on the map. You have to apply your azimuth and get your general direction. That was a night land nav with the three points. Wait, was it? Oh, oh, okay, yeah. And then daytime was like how many? Bar- oh, day- daytime was bad too. Daytime was just as bad. Yeah. Because daytime, um, one of our points, one of our our fifth point, actually was not there. So we spent about two hours trying to find it. We ended up in a restricted area where all we found on the ground was old MREs from privates from like two thousand years ago. Um, <laughs> we found gas masks that were older than me that were like all torn apart on the ground. There was nothing but shell casings and explosive craters in the ground so i was kind of curious to like where where i'm at i thought i was in a firing zone because there's nothing but shell casings and small craters so i'm yep. and we're sitting here walking through here and i'm just sitting here it's all registering at once like i don't think we're supposed to be here <laughs> yeah, because, uh, the way we did it up in fort jackson is we only have daytime we you didn't have that what? no nighttime was the worst because that, that because nighttime. yeah we were sitting there okay so at that night you know when you're at the very beginning where you're sitting there plotting your points yeah mm-hmm. do you plot did you plot them all or did you just like plot we, one there we were given 10 minutes to plot everything we okay so we, they have us like lay down in the sand and like start plotting our points and, yeah. and like at nighttime they started playing like creepy music and they started yep. playing like child laughter sounds mm-hmm. and like any creepy movie you could think of they started playing the sounds from it yes and it, it was even it, it didn't help that it was a controlled burn site, so they were in the middle of yes. burning the forest while we were doing our land nav. So at nighttime, you'd see these random fires just going off. And I actually encountered a wild boar yeah. during oh, night land nav. Me and um, Sora, as my battle buddy, uh, we were walking, and it was to the left of us. It was about 10 feet from us, and I switched my flashlight to the white light. You're not allowed to use white light You're during, supposed during to use night red light. You're supposed to use red light because and noise and light discipline. Yep. But I didn't know what it was. It wasn't responding when we were calling out to it, so I got scared, put on the, the white light, I saw the whole head of the boar. It was a full-grown boar, and <laughs> I immediately, as soon as I saw it, I swear it looked back at me and it made eye contact with me. And I and I told myself in my head, I didn't tell my battle buddy this: if you can't keep up, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I all I remember was bolting in a straight line. I don't remember where he was at, but I just ran as fast as I can. And eventually, we just like met up, and I was like, we almost died. And I was like, let's go back and tell people we got mauled by a boar. That was going to be my story, but it clearly it wasn't true because we were perfectly fine. That was crazy. Um, it's a nightmare. What was yours? Night what was yours? Worst time, just during rent phase or the whole thing? The whole thing. Like oh, the whole man. thing? I got a few for that. Oh, um, okay. Okay, there's... So, when you... Like, they selected... When, they, when like, my drill sergeant let me know that he was selecting me to be soldier of the cycle. Okay. They were, they were like, okay, yeah, you, go, you got to go up in front of a board of drill sergeants. Uh-huh. Which is just like a table with six drill sergeants. And it's the worst thing ever. Pretty intimidating. The worst thing is, you're sitting there waiting, and then you just hear shouting coming from the room that's like, the, the room that the drill sergeants are in, with the board with the, the board is in, you just hear shouting from both the private and the drill sergeants, and you're just like, what is going on? And I was the last person to go, like the very last person to go. I see all the press. And there was so much tension <laughs> the whole time. Like I had no clue what was gonna happen. And like, and then, okay, so when I walk in, the first thing that happens is my hand, like, I, like when I walk in, I let the go, I let the door go a little early, and it like hits me on the shoulder, and so I was like, fuck. And then like I get in there, you know, tell them like whatever, like tell them everything, and then like I did, and then the overall board like questioning, I actually did pretty well on. Yep. And then when I went to go walk back out, I went to grab the handle, and my hand slipped off, and I fucking like face planted into the door, and they got the biggest kick out of that shit, like <laughs> ever. But. You can still fuck up and do well because I still got soldier of the cycle, but sure. I, I still face plan on the fucking door. For sure. <laughs> but that was the worst time, was just the waiting and going in front of the board. That was the worst time of my life. Not Eagle Tower, not the gas chamber, not getting none gassed of, every night at FTX3. Yeah, none of that, nothing was, none was, none of that was too bad. Gas chamber wasn't as bad as I thought. 
Eagle Tower was actually more fun. A lot, was of, so a lot of people. Fun. We had a lot of people that were scared of heights that turned Eagle Tower into a great experience. Do, do you guys call it confidence course or what do you call? It? What do you guys call it? Confidence course is like kind of like a obstacle course for us. Yeah. That's, that's like what we did too. Your fears. And we. Well, it's the Eagle Confidence Tower, and then you have the Confidence Course. Confidence Course. And They're two different things. Tower. Two different, um, two whole, two different locations. Yeah. 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 Oh, you guys did it differently. We just have a Confidence Course, and it's literally like spread out in this whole gigantic forest, and there's like different obstacles, like the five walls. Um, there's this fucking huge gigantic tower that you have to climb up, and you have to like monkey your way down. Yeah. yeah. And it burns your whole. Fucking fire. I remember that. We had to do something like that too because it was yeah. cold yep. that day and our hands could barely grip. I remember it was it was terrible. It and was that's when they figured out the slaughter had like low circulation in his yeah, hands because they were just they were just white. Yeah, his hands. The whole thing were just he, white. He's, he's a his hands. I don't know what it was. He has low circulation going into his yeah. hands and his hands would turn solid blue. and they would turn like grayish white. And he yeah, can't that too. It was scary. But I think the funniest thing that happened was Jacob's ladder because we had a lot of short people oh, yeah. in, in the company. Ladder. They couldn't reach like. The last part, not the last part, but like there's certain like part like of the gaps, tower, like you can't numbers. get over it if you're a fucking short person. So there's this is one drill sergeant. I'm not gonna name him. He's fucking <laughs> snapping, like these privates snapping. It's <laughs> like this is what happens when you're fucking short. And it's just snapping <laughs> like crazy. So yeah. Well, and we had uh, short senior drill sergeants. Yeah, so. we, had, we had a few short ones. We we have short ones too, and they're fucking scary as fuck. <laughs> Ours was a lame. Yeah, we were their dominance. Female, yeah. females, female drill sergeants are actually fucking scary. I mean, for us, for any. our company, it was, it was horrible. Yeah, we we were supposed any. to be combat wombats, but... Combat we, wombats? The fuck is that? That's, that's, that's the first platoon. Oh. But we never had first platoon. We only had second, third, and fourth. Because, like, during our cycle, we only had about 160 soldiers, and that is divided. Oh, you guys have a three. tiny, tiny, yeah. tiny. But I heard this summer there's going to be first, second, third, and fourth platoon, which is going to be, like... There's gonna be a lot in that cycle, which is starting this month. So yeah. Aside from that, what is the reason for you guys joining the army? The reason? Um, yeah. Like most. Per, like what is what? First what drove you forward to being a part of this um, organization? And um, are you planning to make it a career, or is it just something that is temporary for you? Um, I would say, I mean, for a while, it was I, w I really wanted to make it into a career, but that also determined the MOS, the job that I was given. And I'm a 25 Bravo, um, that's information technology specialist, so I work in IT dealing with a lot of computers. I plan to use, well now that I'm a 25 Bravo, it now became temporary. It's not something I want to turn into a career because I want to use the IT experience and the certifications that I get through the Army to succeed in the civilian world. And that's why it became temporary because I know I can do, I mean, I'm not gonna say I know, I'm hoping I can do much better with the certifications and the experience in the civilian world outside of the army. And I joined the army, like, okay. There was like an ultimate goal to join the army, which was, um, I did want to have um, a better life because I was working like in a, like a nine to five job that I hated and it was, it was boring as shit. <laughs> and so I came here, so like, I'm literally, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I was in the shower one day like I had, I had just like like shammed out of work, and I was in the shower in the morning, and I was like, I'm gonna go join the army, and so I went and signed up. Big mistake. Is that no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's exactly how it happened. So I went and joined the army, and I went to mess, and then got shipped here. Well, got shipped to Benning, and then here Fort Gordon. Yeah, we're still in Georgia. Yeah, still in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Haven't left my home. Haven't left my home state since I started. We're still in. We're still but really I do plan on making this a career because I don't know. The military has always feel like it's been a part of my life, no matter where I've tried to go. Oh, like, sure, I, like sure. I went to college, yeah, right. I always just, I always somehow got drawn back to the military. And like now that I'm here, like there are shitty things about it, like formations and there's stupid rules. But it's like you it's kind of like a love hate relationship. It's like I still love the army, but I hate the things about it. But it's like. Why leave? And that's so far, I like it. It's better can, than any job I've ever had. You can throw that with a lot of things in life, even outside the army. There's gonna be a love-hate relationship with everything you do. Pros and cons come with decisions, but yeah. it all depends on how you handle it and what you make out of it. And you're gonna hear that a lot in the army, especially about your duty stations. Because some duty stations suck a lot worse than others, and some are really fun. You hear about places like Korea, and then you hear about people going to Alaska that doesn't have, exactly have the best reputation. 
But at the end of the day, someone in Alaska can have just as much fun as somebody in Korea.